we human beings are weak. We know that in this life our fight for salvation is a tough one. And we need God's help. We need prayer to save our own souls. But how is our prayer life? Today, Father Francois Bande is going to tell us about some early signs that we can detect that our prayer life is failing. That if you don't fix it soon, we are going on the wrong path. And he's also going to tell us on how to lead a very healthy, good prayer life. So, somebody, Father Bande. Salve Maria, Brother John. Happy to be back here uh, for our podcast. Brother Vincent. Salve Maria. So, Father, let's enter right into it. What is the first sign? of a prayer life which is on the path to failure, what is that is going wrong? Well, a path of failure, I think um, the first sign is um, a lack of discipline, where the person is completely distracted, is mm -hmm. completely kind of taken up with the material things, with the, the rat race of today's life, um, just kind of working, studying, or just um, um, doing um, errands and everything, and, and, and forgets what's more important. And that is one's relationship with God, with Our Lady, with the angels, with the saints. I think this is something that is very important and that we should always be conscious and, and worried about, not to let uh, allow ourselves to be taken up by the, um, by the agitation of the world, you see, by the distractions that, that occur in our day-to-day -day life. So, Father, by discipline, you mean that the person, while praying, the person should pay attention in prayer if he starts feeling distracted. Is that a sign that his prayer life is going wrong, that he's on the wrong path? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's not that sign. No, the distractions, I mean, do occur and and uh, our um, our imagination sometimes, it, it's hard to kind of tie our imagination down, right? So um, no, what I mean by lack of discipline in, 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 in prayer life is not to have a moment in your day that you've planned beforehand, mm -hmm. all right, where you should recollect yourself. Whether that's in the morning, the afternoon, or in the evening, you should have a consistency. You see, the discipline here, when I mean discipline, um, a lack of discipline is a, sh is a sign that your prayer life is uh, in danger, is, uh, is a lack of consistency on, on to pray every day. It's, um, it's, like, it's just like going to the gym. All right. Um, I, now it's very popular, right, to go to the gym, and it's it's uh, actually important, you know, to keep your body healthy, and um, and well, what do all of the uh, personal trainers uh, suggest and insist upon is con is consistency. That you go three times a week, or you go four times a week, or you go f every day of the week to the gym, and you do twenty minutes, half an hour of exercise, of jogging, of um, of whatever weights or whatever swimming, you know, and and this this um, in 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 the material world in the physical world for your body is also true for your soul. So you need that consistency. You have to plan your week and plan your day so that you discipline yourself in such a way that there's a moment in your day that you're going to pray. I understand. So, for like, instance, I'm sorry. What? No, like so, have it at. Set aside at the same time every day to... That would be, be the, the ideal, yes. That would be the ideal. If you, um, if you wake up, um, some people I know, uh, well, in a monastery, it uh, might, might be easier than, than, you know, in a family life. But uh, you wake up a half an hour earlier than the rest of the family, you see. So if um, you wake up normally at 7, well, you wake up at 6.30. Or if you wake up at 6, we try to wake up a little bit earlier. And, and you do, you know, some 20 minutes of prayer there. And what what really helps to discipline yourself, all right, and 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 to um, to um, to have that consistency in your prayer life, um, is to have to create an ambience. Okay. Um, so to have a little a little oratory, a little shrine in your home. Um, it can also be in your car. If you have to transit a lot, you know, if you have to travel a lot, well, you can use that time where you're alone in your car going to work or whatever. Of course, there will be the occasional distraction of the traffic. You have to pay attention, right, what's going on. But it it is a moment where you can, uh, you know, shut off the radio or turn on the radio where um, a channel that they're praying the rosary and you have that moment of prayer. Mm -hmm. It's not the ideal place, okay? The car is not the ideal place, but... If you don't have any other place, if you're you, you're just too busy, then it's something that can be uh, that can be um, used for for uh, for uh, uh, you to rec to connect yourself 
with God. So, so I think discipline is very important. It's something that um, that uh, is is in the beginning is maybe a little bit hard to acquire that consistency. Actually, it's like that also for uh, for the gym. All right, somebody who's not used to um, walking or swimming or gym or or, or or running, jogging, whatever, it's hard. That first month, those first two three months are are difficult. But once you get into it. Then it becomes easy. So the first sign of um, of a failing prayer life is lack of discipline, lack of that consistency. You have to have that consistency. So it's not sufficient to go to um, to uh, Sunday mass mm-hmm. once a week. All right, it's very important. It's actually an obligation. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. <laughs> we have to go to mass at least once a week on Sundays, um, but it's not sufficient. I always say you have to. It's um, Saint John Paul II actually that used to say that we have to create a domestic church in our families, all right? I, I always like that uh, that expression of his. You know, we, have, we create a domestic church in our families. And in order to do that, well, you create a little, a little corner where, of, of prayer, yeah. you know, where you yourself, you go, and then you bring your family. Uh, it's so important. Um, a family that prays together, stays, stays together. together. Stays together, yes. <laughs> Brother Vincent, let me ask you a question now. Since okay. we're talking about uh, prayer, Father gave the example of, I mean, Father gave the first condition of a, a disciplined prayer life, that discipline, and that uh, the first uh, condition, yeah. a sign of a bad prayer life is mm-hmm. lack of discipline. Tell me something. How do you say your prayers every day so people have a living example? I mean, well, like Father, when we mentioned, we asked Father about the, the timing. When we always learned when we were joining the heralds we heard right from Dr. Plinia is the best time to say your prayers is when you're well rested. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times, sometimes you see people there that they, they leave their prayer to the, the end of the day and you're, you're praying there, hammering nails. And yeah. so it's always it's something that, negative, yes. something it makes it much more difficult yeah. for you to And makes the prayer much less effective. Less effective. It's and better to pray so while you're nailing nails yeah, than not to pray. Not to yeah. pray. Yeah. That's, okay. that's for but sure. But that's not the ideal, not right? Not the ideal, but mm. to leave a certain time of the day where you stop no matter what. Mm-hmm. When you stop there, you can be in the middle of something, no, I have to stop because, and then to say your, say your prayers. It gives you a, choose a time of the day that's, that's when you're well rested. When that's you're well rested, when you here, here in in um, we're in Brazil. Actually, we're in South America. It's not the custom there in North America to uh, take a nap, all right. But in Europe, yeah. uh, in in North South America, it is. So, so the man who inspired the heralds of the gospel, uh, Dr. Plinio Correa de Oliveira, he um, he actually uh, would do a first part of his prayers in the morning as he woke up, and then he'd do the second part of his prayers after his nap, um, after lunch. In the afternoon, so um, he would actually get into his car and he would uh, kind of drive around. Well, his driver would drive him around as he would pray the rosary. Um, you know, um, slowly driving around. The, you know, the the, the parks uh, of São Paulo. He would. He chose the car because. He said, back then there were no cell phones. He said, the only place where I can be in peace, where nobody can come Reach to me, me, interrupt me, my prayers. <laughs> that's when he would get into the car because if he was at his house, somebody would come running with. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's the danger of dis- distractions. And that's part of the discipline, right? Yeah. Lack of discipline in, in, in praying and, and organizing yourself, all right, will also, um, well, create, um, allow distractions to occur. You see, so we have to be careful with distractions, all right? Not to um, not to be attentive to everything that's going around uh, you if you're praying. That's why it's it's important to create an ambience of recollection. So a little oratory at home or a little chapel if you're able to have a little chapel at home, um, where you can gather the family. So like brother brother Vincent said, you know, it, the, the best pr- time to pray is when you're awake mm-hmm. and at the the best moment of the day. Mm-hmm. See, so that's either in the morning or um, early in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Remember Doc. when we used to do, we spent a few years doing a in, in New Orleans, in Louisiana. It was one of the cities in the United States that had the most amount of adoration chapels. Ah. So that's something you could suggest for the people too, that if you have close by in your parish that has perpetual adoration or adoration during the day, to go spend an hour, mm-hmm. half an hour, whatever, if you have the time there in front of the Blessed Sacrament. Because uh, inside those adoration chapels, it's something, it's mysterious in the sense that, because with the Blessed Sacrament there, you seem you walk in, and it seems like the outside world disappears. Uh, and you're in that 
You're at peace with you're God. You're at peace. You're in. You're close to Him in front of the Blessed Sacrament yeah. there. And most of the times, the churches, they, it's a small chapel, mm -hmm. so you're close to the Blessed Sacrament. Something there, and it, and you forget about what's going on in the world, and you stay there, and you have that. Of course, that moment that. of. That's, I think that's just beautiful. It's it's like it's like going to the gym. It's a spiritual gym. Yeah. Okay, that's right. <laughs> in, instead of <laughs> going true. to work out your body, you're going to go work out your spiritual life. Because the spiritual life is like a um, spiritual muscle. Uh, we should, you know, it's St. Gregory the Great, if I remember well, he gives that image that um, it, to, to exercise um, in prayer life is to exercise a spiritual muscle. Where as, as, uh, the more you, um, you, you, you pray, the more that spiritual mm -hmm. muscle will become strong and will become relevant uh, in your life. So, uh, so the Adoration Chapels, for example, a lot of people, t you know, get out of their way um, right after work or before work and they go to the gym. Well, why not do something similar for an Adoration Chapel? That would yeah. be really, really good. So that's a good, you see, this is to put discipline into your prayer, prayer life. Yeah. Of course, in the beginning, St. Louis de Montfort, um, the, um, the apostle of the true devotion to Mary, consecration, he suggests he, um, for somebody who's in his early stages of conversion, he suggests not to um, exaggerate in your prayer life in the beginning. You know, if you're not used to praying the rosary, the daily rosary, for example, all right, of course, in the moment of conversion, when you have that there sensitive uh, uh, feeling of, of being loved and wanting to retribute that love to God by praying, and so you get all enthused wanting to pray your rosary, um, St. Louis suggests not to pray your rosary um, uh, like that all of a sudden because you'll, um, you'll end up breaking your neck. You know, you'll, you'll pray your rosary the first day, the second day, the third day, and then the fourth day, you'll be so discouraged because it's, uh, you're not used to it, all right? It's like, it's like uh, someone who goes to the gym and they, uh, oh, I'm going to start weighing, uh, you know, start picking up 200 pounds here every day. You know, so the first day he's going to maybe a be, be able, able to, to do, do the 200 pounds. Second day he's going to be in, the, in bed, yeah, right? Yeah. So, so St. Louis says, no, begin, all right, by a few prayers, but the secret is consistency. I, I, I really want to nail that, that, that nail, that word, consistency, all right? In order to grow and in order to be successful in your prayer life, you have to be consistent. So start with three Hail Marys a day, but you never give up. And after you're, you're used to do, saying three Hail Marys a day, then you say 10. And that, that might take two weeks. After two weeks, then you're going to say a decade every day. After a month, once you kind of r r feel comfortable with a decade a day, then you can add two decades and you go slowly, slowly. But Increasing. The, 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 the idea is consistency. See, you do what you feel that you're going to be able to do every day. That's discipline. That's seriousness yeah. in prayer life. Father Dr. Plinio, you mentioned before. Yes. We have a... Books over here, you can see him on the books behind Father. Yes. He, of course, as a young man, he started his prayer life by praying just one decade. And he said, for him, that seemed like a great thing. Of course, towards the end of his life, he was praying much more. He was doing a lot of apostolate and many other things. But he started his spiritual life, his prayer life, by praying 10 Hail Marys every day. As time went on, he started praying all three rosaries, because back then we had the three mysteries of the rosary. He would pray the three rosaries every day. And he started living a very intense life of apostolate, going out, talking to people, doing good to others. One day something happened, this whole day was spent in apostolate, and he did not have a spare moment during the day to pray his three rosaries. Right. He came back in the night, and Dr. Neo told this fact, what had happened to him, when he was an old man already. When he had, he had founded a, an association to do good to others, when he had converted thousands of people, when he had done a lot in his life, he told the story. One day as a young man, he came back home and he was tired. He was really tired and he did not have any, he did not do anything wrong in not having prayed the rosary because he did not have a chance at all. Okay. And he thought to himself, well, I pray my three rosies every day. Today, if I don't pray, I think Lady will forgive me because she understands I was working for her. I was not, I did not go to an amusement park. No, I spent my whole day working for Our Lady. It would make sense for me to go to bed because I'm so tired. Mm. He was going to say, no, I have to fight this. I'm going to be consistent. I'm going to maintain my prayer discipline. I'm going to go ahead and pray my three rosaries. He was falling asleep. So he stood up, started walking around, praying his rosary, walking. And even then he would droop once in a while, walking, so tired he was. But he managed to get till the end, really exhausted, finished his three rosaries, went to bed in peace. 
Doch mir told, when he told the story, many years later he said, if on that day I had not finished my three rosaries, I would not be here today. All the graces I received later, many of them, Our Lady was depending on those three rosaries for me to finish, for me to give me strength to take my next step and the next step and I would not be here if it wasn't for those. So how serious something which may seem insignificant but having true discipline can influence your whole life after that. Yes, so true. So true. Because that's that's a um, that's putting your love into action. You see that's a, that's a manifestation of love where you 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 made a promise, you know, I'm going to pray those three um rosaries or four rosaries um um a day and so they have to be accomplished. You see it's something that I that we I owe to our Lord through our blessed mother Mary. Mm-hmm. As true slaves of love, right? Yeah. But it's like what you said, that's a proof of the love that we have. Because yeah. how many people, they'll make sacrifices for other things. But the prayer rosary, to stop for 15 minutes to pray the rosary, oh no, I don't have time for that. It's, I'm too busy or whatever. But you see how it's something that's, like you said, it's, that shows that love yeah. that we have. Right. So the the second sign, let's Mm -hmm. go on to our second sign, Brother Vincent, and the second sign to um, a failing prayer life, all right, I would say that it's it's to pray the indispensable, all right? So this this second sign is also, is is, is already for somebody who who has the um, habit of praying. Who's advanced a bit in the prayer life. Right, who's already begun begun, um, praying um, every day. And uh, therefore, who um, who um, who is uh, aspiring to grow in their prayer life, all right. But if at one point in that desire to um, to be agreeable to God and to put one's uh, consecration um, into action into uh, everyday life, that person starts to just pray the indispensable. You see, just what's necessary. Well, that's also a sign of it. The beginning of a failing prayer life. Can you give an example, Father, for this? Well, um, let's um, let's say that uh, it's um, because the the, um, the saints. All right, I forget who who mentioned this, but um, I remember reading in the in the Book of Saints that the, the 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 principle is the following: if you're not growing in your prayer life, you're diminishing. In your prayer life, prayer life is not something that can be stabilized. All right, there's no, um, let's say, um, horizontal level in prayer life. Either you're going vertical, you're growing. You see, you're you're ascending that holy mountain, this the the Jerusalem, celestial Jerusalem, or you're diminishing. I guess growing here does not. I assume. Does not mean just growing quantitatively because if every every week I pray another rosary by the end of my life, I uh, <laughs> that's a good point there, brother yeah. John. That's a good point. Yeah, no, it's not to be a parakeet, a parakeet, uh, a, a parrot, 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 a parrot, just yes, a parrot. repeating exactly because there are here in Brazil there are many parrots in my <laughs> in my pastoral work I visit a lot of families and and we meet up with a lot of beautiful parrots and they all they all talk they're all talkative. <laughs> some of them pray. I mean, and <laughs> some of them pray. <laughs> But what is it worth, you see? Because, you know, they just kind of repeat, right? And yeah. the parrot doesn't have that, well, spiritual conscience, et cetera, et cetera. Although, although it is beautiful to hear a parrot pray, the yeah. Hail Mary. Yeah. But, uh, but that's it. You know, we can't just be repeating prayers. It has to come from the heart, of course. So this is what's important. We have to, we, ha- we can't just pray the indispensable. You see, some Catholics are, are just Sunday Catholics. They go to Mass once a week on Sundays, and then the rest of the week, uh, well, they, they, they act as though they're not Catholics. Well, that's false. That's, that, that, that doesn't work. So we can't just be, um, let's say, um, um, satisfied with, uh, with what we pray um, uh, with what we've attained, mm-hmm. we should always want more. It's the fruit of love. Love has no limits, right? Who loves exaggerates and everything, <laughs> all right? So, but, you know, we have to be serious and we have to be consistent and we have to also always realize, you know, our our shortcomings and our uh, difficulties, but, but we should be desirous to uh, what we pray. You see, we pray with intimacy, with, with fervor, with devotion. So it's not just lip service. It, it's, it has to come from the heart. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a training. It really is, you know, to, to that's why the, 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 the rosary is so powerful because we're continuously repeating uh, the Hail Mary. 
you know, that, that, that mysterious prayer that convinced Our Lady um, to say yes to the angel and to become the mother of God. So, so this is something that we should be. So I think, let's say, Father, somebody who's praying the rosary, will it be, I guess, in the earlier stages, like you said, I'm praying 10 Hail Marys today. I want to pray a month from now, 30 Hail Marys or one whole rosary, 50 Hail Marys. I'm making progress. But I guess at one point it's going to be like, you know what, from today onwards, I'm going to make a, a conscious effort to really meditate on every rosary. I won't pray it like I'm usually praying. Right. Or maybe at some moments, I guess, I assume that not praying indispensable. You know what, I'm praying a rosary or I'm praying three rosaries every day or four rosaries every day. But you know what, I see, I know that a novena is coming up, a novena to, I don't know, to St. Joseph, let's say. We prayed mm. that recently. I'm going to participate in that novena. So, But that's not part of my daily prayers, I know. But I want to give a little bit more mm. so that every once in a while there's something else which pops up and uh, I don't remain in, you know what, I've decided to pray this, I'm going to pray that now. Something a little bit here, a little bit there, I mean, in a human relationship. A little extra here and there yeah. to do. So the word here, I think, is to break our comfort zone. Yeah. To come out of our, our comfort, comfort zone. zone. You see, we have to we have to break that comfort zone in which we've we found ourselves after, you know, if there's six months of praying the rosary, one year, let's say I've been praying the rosary for many years, and uh, thanks be to God, what a yeah. grace. What a grace. But, but, you know, I have to, but I've become comfortable with that. Yeah. If I become comfortable with that and I don't do anything and I just stay in that, well, that's a sign of failing prayer life. You're diminishing. Careful, careful, very, be very careful because if, you're, if you become comfortable with your prayer life, then you're regressing. You're not progressing. So you have to puncture. You have to get out of that comfort zone, all right, like you said, Brother John, all right, by being attentive to um, the inspirations of your guardian angel. Um, uh, to to what God or Our Lady will put into your path. So if uh, if you find a, a YouTube channel like our uh, <laughs> YouTube channel of the consecrated uh, uh, children to Our Lady, you see the the the, the devoted um, those who are devoted to Jesus through Mary, and 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 we are offered a novena to Saint Joseph or a novena to the Holy Spirit or whatever, then we should dig in because that will break us. That will bring us out of the yeah. comfort zone. And will allow us to 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 um, um, to train our spiritual life in another way. I'm coming back, back. to the to to the gym. Okay, <laughs> the um, those who understand um, um, building building uh, endurance, physical endurance, or building muscle, they say that um, you should uh, in your training at the gym. All right, once in a while you have to break that comfort zone. Interesting. So if you're used to, let's say, you know, uh, pumping 20 pounds of bumbells uh, every day, all right, and you've been doing it for months, all right, well, all of a sudden they say, well, you have to break that. You have to break that in order to make the muscle grow or your stamina grow. You see, so they say, well, instead of doing 20 uh, pounds, well, then you should, um, you should add on, uh, you should diminish maybe, you know, put 15 pounds, but instead of doing, uh, you know, three sessions, you do five sessions. Mm. So you, mm -hmm. you kind of break that, 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 um, that the habit that you have, come out of the comfort zone, and that will kind of um, energize mm -hmm. your, your body. So it energizes your soul, it energizes your, and then you allow God, you allow the angels, Our Lady, to, um, to, uh, to intervene in your life. I guess, Father, prayer is a relationship that we have with God, of course. But let's imagine a, a human relationship, a family, a husband and wife, children. Imagine the husband and wife were always being totally faithful to each other, but in the exact same way during 50 years. I mean, nobody could take it. Or, I mean, she does indispensable. He works, he gets a salary, the wife prepares the food. But if every once in a while one doesn't go out of his way to please the other, to buy a gift, yeah. to do something, it would, I mean the human relationship would be impossible. That's you have true, to go true. out of your way once in a while yes. to give value to what you have. Same applies to God. Give something, you know what, I'm going to make an extra sacrifice today. I'm going to do this, I'm going to pray more. Something once in a while, I'm not going to just do the indispensable. I'm going to show God that I really love him. I'm grateful for him more than I can tell him. Well, that, that comes to our, our next point, okay, mm -hmm. is, um, is uh, you know, um, aversion to sacrifice. Interesting. Those who are um, scared of sacrifice, um, well, they are in danger of of um, of, de de have, of walking into a uh, into a, um, a a path of pr uh, failing their prayer life. 
Because if you fee- flee sacrifice, if you don't want to sacrifice yourself, if you want, don't want to give yourself, well, then you're, you're going against um, what prayer life is inspiring to do. <laughs> prayer life inspires you to want to imitate our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? Take up your cross and follow me. Take there up your go. cross and follow yes. me. Yes. So, so a family life, a father, a mother, that um, you know, they've ended into a kind of a comfort zone in their family, um, and they've progressed spiritually, thanks be to Our Lady, they pray every day and everything, but you know, they're satisfied with what they've been doing, and they don't want to kind of puncture the bubble. They don't want to do any more because, well, they're afraid of the sacrifice that that will bring upon the them. The sufferings. Right? Yeah. So that means that's a sign that their prayer life is failing. Yeah. So, so we have to embrace our cross. We can't be afraid of breaking, punching that bubble, puncturing that bubble of comfort um, in order to, to, to always do one more step. We have to have Christ and Christ crucified as our model. He was not afraid to embrace his cross and to say yes to what the Father was offering him, asking him to do, which was to offer himself as a pure sacrifice for mankind. So, so he, he didn't come to, to be served. We should always remember, our Lord Jesus Christ came to serve. So if we're true devotion, if we're true um, devotees to Jesus through the hands of Mary, if we are consecrated to, to them uh, out, out of uh, slaves of love, well, then we should also be aspiring. I know it's not always easy, all right, to, 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 to sacrifice course, yourself. It, 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 naturally it, speaking, man, humankind is... Yeah. You run away from suffering. Flee. You, yeah. We don't. You run nobody away. wants to suffer. It's yeah. it's something that's. So, it's, but we have to. I guess also, Father. I mean, whether we like it or not, we all suffer. I mean, whether you're willing to make the sacrifice or you're not, you're going to suffer at any rate. All human beings suffer. It's just that when you pray and you lead a healthy prayer life, you look forward to suffering because you know it's an act of love. Well, you have a purpose in life. You, you yeah. know, by because pagans suffer. Catholics yeah. suffer. We're all going to suffer. But Catholics, by suffering, since suffering has a spiritual dimension, we know that it's part of our uh, uh, of, of 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 kind of um, purifying ourselves, yeah. and we will have merits out of suffering um, by uniting ourselves to Christ, who offered Himself. Well, then that's going to be. You see, it gives us a purpose. It gives us a a, um, a, a there's a there's a reason to suffering, but a pagan, they still have to suffer and they don't have a purpose in suffering. Yeah. So they despair. Yeah. Dr. Pliny once commented, compared the suffering of the two thieves on the cross right next to our Lord. So you had our Lord, the good thief and the bad, bad thief. thief. Yes. Yeah. He once put the question, which of the thieves suffered more? It seems like the good thief suffered more because he had to make the sacrifice when everyone was shouting against our Lord, when they were, at least the bad thief had the consolation that he was on the side of the public opinion. So that made him, so he was blaspheming against our Lord, just like the whole populace over there. While the Mm -hmm. good thief had to break his human respect, break his shame to to pronounce our Lord's name. And he did that while while St. Peter, who was the head of the church, he, far away from the cross, had been ashamed of our Lord. He had denied our Lord. But the good thief, in front of everyone, he had the courage to pronounce our Lord's name. It's mm. true. But he said, Dr. Neil said, the good thief suffered much lesser than the bad thief because the good thief had hope. He was sure that he was going to pass another few hours over there and then be eternally happy. Jesus promised him, you will be with day, this day with me in paradise. Well, the bad thief, he did not have hope. Mm. And what takes away suffering, what consoles us in our suffering is hope and leading a good prayer life. But embracing suffering as God wants us to, I guess it gives us hope and makes the suffering easier. I mean, So there you go. So that's why prayer is indispensable for salvation. All right. The good thief was saved. Why? Because he prayed. He had the power of prayer. He had the strength to humiliate himself and to, um, to submit himself to God and ask forgiveness yeah. and ask for mercy. This is the power of prayer. Prayer is a means of salvation. And this is why we should always kind of remind ourselves of this truth. And this is why it's so important for us to, to enter into the, into the spiritual school of Our Lady, 
Um, because this is another point. Mm -hmm. Another point of a sure sign of failing prayer life is to diminish your devotion to Our Lady. Mm -hmm. By diminishing your devotion to Our Blessed Mother Mary, by um, uh, forgetting her, you are failing in your prayer life because she is an intercessor. She is the one through whom our Lord came to us. You know, she's the that celestial channel, sacred channel, um, through which our, our Lord introduced himself into the world. And so if we want to be consistent, if we want to be um, united to our Lord, um, well, we should imitate our Lord. He came to us through her, so we should go to him through her. But Father, I can, let's suppose that somebody who's watching us now has this objection. No, I can increase in my prayer life. I don't, I may not have a feeling prayer life. I don't have devotion to Our Lady. I can have a lot of devotion to say St. Jerome or to so and so other saint. Why do I need to have devotion to Our Lady? Why can't I just lead a very intense prayer life and forget about Our Lady? I mean, she's one more saint. Can I do that? No, no, not at all, not at all. It's it's very good to have devotion to many other saints, many other intercessors. Mm. But Our Lady, all right, is she is a co-redeemer, all right? Who, who, this is not a, a Catholic dogma, of course, but, you know, those who are very devoted to Our Blessed Mother, and there are um, big discussions right now as to, um, you know, um, trying to understand Our Lady's role, but, um, but her role as Mother of God is is uh, is unique and therefore we should uh, we should learn to submit ourselves to her in order to better unite ourselves to our lord mm -hmm. um saint louis de montfort uh, he he goes and he says who does not have mary as mother does not have god as father that's interesting true so yeah. this is a point to be meditated upon but let's see uh then let me just put another objection. If I have a lot of devotion to Our Lady, then aren't the other saints dispensable? I mean, do you pray to any other saint except Our Lady? No, several other saints. You have several Why devotions. do you do that if he said Our Lady is enough? Because the more you have, and they are all, all the saints are also, they're all devotees of our Blessed Mother. Yeah. And the same thing in, like in a family, you have a, a big family there. The more that go to the mother to ask for something from the father, because all children know that <laughs> you, you know, want something, family, don't you? <laughs> come a big, you know, if you ask your father directly, you probably won't get what you're asking for. But if you ask your mother, it's easier. But then if you get everybody together <laughs> and you go all together, ask the mother, your mother, it, there's a larger chance that you're going to. Mm. Brother, so, how, how many siblings do you have? Well, we're nine in the family. So, <laughs> And how many are in the Heralds? Eight. Eight. So yeah, he knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing. So, I mean, if you have the other saints helping you, yeah. the other there, the more interest has go, going to our Blessed Mother, asking on your behalf. Mm. It's, of course, yeah. It's easier to, the more chance you'll have to. Is that correct, Father? Does it correspond to Catholic doctrine? <laughs> it does, it does, it does. No, it's perfect, it's perfect. It's um, l'union fait la force, we say in French. The unity um, creates uh, strength. Uh, strength. Exactly. So, um, so if we're all united um, towards God under the mantle of our Blessed Mother Mary, united with the saints, then, then we're powerful, we're indomitable. Hmm. See. But then the opposite, like you said, if we have all the saints, but we don't have her. Yeah. Yeah. There, there you go. Then so. it's, how are we going to? I mean, God, St. Louis makes it very clear. God does not need Our Lady. He could have done the whole thing without Our Lady. But so he made it a point. He wanted, he put Our Lady as a mediatrix under our Lord Jesus Christ. Intercess. So you don't have a right to go against God's will. If God said that he wanted her to be the channel, who are we to? Yeah. Of course, not always we have to mention her. We can pray to St. Anthony, but we know that St. Anthony is going to ask her to go to God. That's because God wants it. He doesn't need her, but he chose her. And who are we to tell that? Yeah. Uh, so to true. deny his will. I mean. He, God can do what he wants, right? Yeah. So he wanted it that way there. So <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's, let's do it the way he. Yeah, exactly. 
You're looking there. So yes, I was looking here, just speaking about devotion to our Blessed Mother, how how it's so important um, because those who do not have devotion to our la our Lady, all right, they are not only lacking in prayer life, but they are diminishing in prayer life, all right, because Holy Scripture. Well, this is the Word of God. I'm chapter. Ch this is Saint Luke, Gospel of Saint Luke. Um, it's the um, it's the uh, the first chapter, so it's the infancy na narrative. So it's the Canticle of Mary. All right. I would just like to read, you know, one mm -hmm. one um, verse of the Canticle of Mary here, where Our Lady goes and she says, "The Mighty One has done great things for me. The Holy is and Holy is His name." Um, sorry, sorry. Just just before number forty eight, number forty eight. For He has looked upon His handmaid's lowliness. Behold, from now on. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. Behold, from now on will all ages call me blessed. So this is the word of God. From now on, all ages will call me, Blessed Mother Mary, blessed. Yes. So if we want to participate in the word of God, if we want to be united to the word of God, mm -hmm. if we want to respond accordingly to yeah. the will of God, so we have to um, proclaim her blessedness, proclaim her blessedness yeah. for all ages. So this is scripture, yeah. all right? So this, see the importance of devotion to our Blessed Mother Mary. So I think, you know, it's something that, that we should ponder upon and never be fearful, never be afraid to put Our Lady on a pedestal because our Lord Jesus Christ is just so much bigger. We're ne she's never yeah. going to take our Lord's place. Yeah. She can't because God, our Lord is God and Our Lady, for as the much creature. as she is the mother of God, she is still a creature. She was created by God. The Dr. Pini once mentioned that he had taken a, a serious decision, a promise in his life. And if it was a promise, it was like a, a resolution in his life. That's a better word. That whenever he would make a spiritual conference, give a talk on spiritual things, he made it a point to always, always, always mention the Blessed Virgin Mary. Hmm. And he said, somebody may ask me, but why do you always mention the Blessed Virgin Mary? And do you not always mention the Sacred Heart of Jesus? Because the Sacred Heart of Jesus is much more the Blessed Virgin Mary. Right. And he said, because Jesus is infinite. He's much more than her. He doesn't need this. Yeah. Whenever I talk about anything spiritual, I'm talking about him. He's included. I don't have to mention, if I talk about St. Anthony, if I talk about anything beautiful in the world, obviously I know I'm talking about Jesus because he's always there. Our Lady is not infinite, but God wants her to be honored for all ages. Mm -hmm. So I make it a point to mention her because she is not infinite. Being infinite, our Lord is automatically there always. Beautiful. So, it's very beautiful. Father, I think that was a good moment to mention the consecration to Our Lady as well. Yes. Because, uh, then, like we normally say, this podcast is dedicated to the slaves of Our Lady, all those who have made themselves slaves of love to Jesus through the hands of Mary. But there are many of you who are watching us right now who don't believe belong entirely to Jesus. In this case, we recommend that you check out the link in the description below which will teach you about the way to consecrate yourself, give yourself entirely to Jesus, but through the hands of Mary, according to the method that St. Louis de Montfort taught. Yes, because this is um, going to give you, um, I, I really recommend this very, very, very much that you uh, go down to the link if you're not consecrated yet, because this will give you spiritual victory. All right, to consecrate yourself as a slave of love to Jesus through the hands of Mary will give you spiritual strength that you'll never experience before. It will um, it will surround you with angels and 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 light and encouragement. It'll give you a lot of hope. So it's something that that you know we we insist upon a lot. Um, our community we're all consecrated to um, to Jesus through the hands of Mary. We're all slaves of love, yeah. and this is uh, you know what um, what gives us that there. Let's say that uh, spiritual momentum to um, to continue evangelizing and proclaiming the word of God uh, despite all the difficulties, right? All the challenges that occur. Um, we're always kind of uh, um, just heading for victory, you know, <laughs> with, uh, with, with Mary and Jesus. Yeah. So um, just to come back to our last point here, we, we already spoke about four points. Our last point um, of uh, a sign of a failing prayer life, all right, is not to listen to God. Someone who doesn't listen to God, all right, uh, in his aspirations is, is certainly failing in his prayer life. 
And this may happen to somebody who thinks they're, they're very, very devoted. This many times failing to, um, to uh, listen, in, listen and to act upon God's uh, inspirations, all right, happens to many people who, who go to daily mass, for example, mm-hmm. who pray their daily mm-hmm. rosary. And how does this happen? How do you fail to listen to God? That's by putting yourself in the place of God. Unfortunately, there is a devotion that is based on pride, all right, where the person wants to control um, their spiritual life, wants to control grace, and wants to control God. And so they put themselves in the place of God, and they pray, um, believing that they are already um, holy. They're already saints because uh, they've been able to discipline themselves. They've been able to um, have devotion to Our Lady. They've been able to 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 embrace the cross of of suffering. They've been able to um, well to progress in their prayer life. But they've been doing it for the wrong reasons, and that's for themselves. Mm-hmm. So this is a danger that we should always take care of, all right? We're, we're, when we pray, we don't do it for ourselves. We have to do it for the love of God. But what do you mean, Father, exactly by listening to God, by putting yourself in the center? Could you, I don't know, maybe give us an example to show how not to do it? What is the wrong way to do it? Right. Okay. Well, just just think of um, the traitor. Uh, Judas Iscariot, all right. He was uh, he was listening to Jesus, wasn't he? He was a friend of Jesus. He had he had a mission to be an apostle. He was an apostle of Jesus of the Lord. But here he was, all right, um, listening to who? He was there. He was listening physically to our Lord. He was he saw the the miracles and and he did uh, um, he did uh, witness uh, the the resurrection of Lazarus, the, um, the 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 expulsion of the devils of of Mary Magdalene. He, I mean, he he saw so many things. Yet was he really listening? He was listening to himself, mm-hmm. to his own greed, to his own selfishness. He was not listening to our Lord. He was not uniting himself to our Lord. He was not submitting himself to our Lord. He was wanting to use our Lord. When you try to use um, God in order to promote yourself, all right, I say this because it's it's something that is very subtle, mm-hmm. all right? It's, 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 not, it's not explicit, but there are some people who um who walk up on um in 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 uh, in church life all right um and and who uh who will even actually go to the ambon and start um proclaiming um the word of god and um and teaching the word of god but but deep down all right they're not doing it out of out of love of god but out of love for themselves they're promoting themselves just think of the pharisees yeah just think of the Pharisees. Well, it's like the, the prayer of the our Lord says in the Gospel, the prayer of the Pharisee and the uh, and the the, the, uh, sinner. the sinner. Pharisee, I am so I am great. I am this. I don't not like this one over here that that sins. I do this. I give the alms. I I do all the prayers of what everything there and there you go. That was not a real prayer, was it? Yeah. And so he was rejected because he was just he was glorifying him himself, himself. and despising. All right, the poor sinner. All right, who was uh, he was a sinner and he was uh, he was humble and he was asking pardon and he was he was uh, well uh, feeling uh, weak and everything and everything but uh, so it's this is the so it's not enough all right to pray and to discipline yourself to have devotion to our lady it's not enough to embrace your cross you also have to submit your own will your will has to be humbled it's the perfect prayer that our lord taught us our Father, everyone knows, is the, the perfect prayer. Any Christian prayer, which is not somewhat related to our Father, mm. is theologically wrong. And then we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There that is go. the perfect prayer. Yeah. Yes. So you don't have that in your prayer somewhere. I mean, people like to talk at God when they pray sometimes. No, They don't want to listen to what, like you said, they don't want to listen to what God wants me to do. No, I want God to give me this. Yes. And... Does God want that? Am I willing to change my will to suit his will? That's why what Brother um, Vincent uh, said about uh, the adoration chapels is so important. Adoration chapels are, uh, create an ambience where, you know, you in the silence of the chapel, of the, the presence, uh, the Eucharistic presence of the, you, you can, you can, 
you can feel, you can l- hear the voice of God. It makes me think of M- Mount Tabor, um, right? When, when with it, or, or on tra- Transfiguration, Transfiguration Day, when, when our Lord transfigured himself, um, what did St. Peter say? Lord, it is good to be here. Dot, you know, that's it. Lord, it is good f- to be here. So this, this is true prayer life, is to, is to listen to God and not want God to listen to you. Um, and, and so this is this is something that is something that we should we should be worried about. All right, where we try to pray in order to kind of force God to do our will. Prayer life is not to force God to do what we want, but prayer life is to enter into a communication, into a relationship, um, loving relationship where our Lord with our Lord, um, um, manifesting to Him what we need, although He already knows what we need. All right, but you know. Wanting to submit ourselves and 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 to enter into his into his love in order to feel his peace and to be able to do his will and everything. I guess we have to pray for two things, right? We have to pray first of all to try and understand what God wants, and then once we do understand, we have to pray for to get it anyway. So yes, <laughs> I mean like like the two aspects of prayer too. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, anyways, so the most important aspect of 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 um, to do in order to um, to um, uh, never to fall into a failing prayer life, all right, never to uh, to uh, experience a failing prayer life. Well, first thing is to pray. Okay, so that's that's the prayer. <laughs> yeah. But you know, in our prayer life, we should always want to progress, always want to grow, never get too comfortable with what we've gained. This makes me think a little bit of a story, a beautiful story that I heard um, of, a, um, of a chapel, a little chapel um, that was uh, linked to a parish. And this chapel was, was kind of far from the parish in such a way that they only had mass once a year. And this, you know, the parish priest was only able to go to this little chapel once a year. But the community of this little chapel, they were very devoted um, to the ch- to, to the patron saint. I think the patron saint of the chapel was Saint Roque, Saint Roque. Anyway, so so here here they had this little chapel, and and this chill little chapel had a bell. Okay. All right, and uh, the bell was rung once a year. All right, when, when they would call the faithful for the coming of the priests who would celebrate Mass. So during a whole year, the bell would be paralyzed. Silent. Silenced. The bell would remain silent for a whole year. So you can imagine, we're out in the field, all right, uh, in the middle of, uh, of, of, of the wild, uh, the animals, the bugs, the birds. So there, who would make their nests on the bell? The pigeons, the birds would go and lay their <laughs> eggs. And so all the bugs, the, you can imagine the spiders would just be thrilled yeah. to go and, you know, spread their <laughs> web. I don't know why they like <laughs> bells so much, but it made <laughs> them. So, so the bell... After, you know, 10, 11, 12 months, all right, well, was full of these, these um, well, objects, all yeah. right, <laughs> uh, full of, of cobwebs and, and, and birds', birds nests, nests and, and, well, you know, the, 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 the normal uh, aspect of uh, the dirtiness of, of just yeah. being abandoned for a whole year. Well, when that bell would start ringing, do you think the birds would stay there? You think the 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 the, the uh, all the, the bugs, the, all the, uh, the, the, spider the spider webs would stay there. No, everything would be cleaned up. Everything with the bell would start ringing, bang, 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 and everything would be cleaned right out. So all the, the feathers would go away, the uh, the nests, <laughs> okay, the cobwebs and everything. It just would get all cleaned up. This is prayer life, all right. But don't wait a year mm. to pray, right? Every time you pray, you get rid of all that might stick to you that is that will keep you from growing so that will be pride that will be greed that will be um, vanity whatever all the vices you see that you have that are sticking on you all right well every time you pray those vices those cobwebs are broken wow. all right so so it's something that we should always remember okay the first the first sign of a of, of, of breaking ourselves away from a failing prayer life. All right, the first sign, positive sign, is to pray. <laughs> but then we have to learn to pray well. Yeah. 
All right? So that's where we have to pray for the glory of God. We have to pray in order to enter into intimate communication with God. We have to want to do the will of God, like in the Our Father. That's a very beautiful, Father. But unfortunately, it's time for us to finish now. Oh, dear. So. <laughs> Can you give us a final blessing? Okay, very well. So it was a pleasure being here, Brother John, Brother Vincent. All right, so we all encourage everybody once again to discover this beautiful um, treaty of the slaves of true devotion to, to Jesus through the hands of Mary, all right, so that we um, may discover the treasures that are offered to us through prayer life. And may you always be freed from anything that might make you fail in your prayer life. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And may Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Salve Maria. Salve, Salve Maria. Maria.